Hello and welcome. My name is Jaden, and today on behalf of Key and Coffee, I'll be showing you how to make a delicious and complex cup of coffee from the comfort of your own home. If you haven't heard of Key and Coffee before, we are a family-owned business founded by Martin and Karen Dietrich that's been a coffee house staple in Southern California since 2005. Our goal with this video is to be in-depth, but still approachable. It might seem daunting at first, but after a few tries, you'll be making a cup of coffee at home just like a seasoned barista. The things you'll need for this video are high quality filtered water, preferably filtered using reverse osmosis, a Hario V60 coffee dripper, a scale that measures in grams, I'll be using the Hario V60 drip scale, Hario V60 paper filters, a Bonavita electric kettle or any sort of gooseneck kettle, some fresh roasted keen coffee. If you don't use keen coffee, this tutorial won't work. Obviously I'm kidding and that's a joke, but do make sure you are using high quality coffee because bad coffee brewed perfectly is still bad coffee. Preferably a burr coffee grinder, you'll be okay with a blade grinder though. And something to brew into. I'll be using a Hario 600 milliliter range server, but you can use anything that can fit about a standard two cups of coffee or about 14 ounces. Links to all of these items will be in the description. You may notice a lot of Hario stuff here. You don't have to use Hario, but they are our personal favorite here at Keen. Our first step is going to be heating our water to 202 degrees Fahrenheit or 94 degrees Celsius. If you don't have a kettle that reads temperature like this one, you can just have a boiling pot of water and then use an instant read thermometer to check the temperature. And if you don't have that, just let your water get to a boil and then let it subside for a minute or two. Uh, that'll be at about 200 degrees. If we use actual boiling hot water with our pour over, we're gonna get kind of a little bit of a burnt quality to our coffee and we definitely don't want that. All right, so we're gonna grab our coffee here and weigh it out. Now, we're gonna use 25 grams in this method, but we're actually gonna weigh out a little bit more because we haven't ground it yet. Once we grind it, we might lose some because it'll get stuck in the grinder or some might fall on the floor. So it's gonna be good to weigh out a little bit extra. Uh, make sure you tear your scale before adding any of your coffee. We wanna be accurate. And I'm gonna weigh out about 28 grams. Now it's time to grind our coffee. Ideally, you're gonna be using a burr grinder. The benefits of a grinder like this is that it has an entrance and an exit. Once the grinds reach a certain size, they'll be, in, they'll be put into this chamber here. With a blade grinder, it's all just one chamber, which makes for a uh, much more varied grind size. Regardless of if you use a burr grinder or a blade grinder, we're gonna be looking for something around the consistency of sand. Now that we have our coffee ground and our water heated, we're ready to start our pour over. So I'm gonna grab my range server here, put it on the scale, dripper on top of that, and then we're gonna grab a Hario paper filter. Uh, now you're gonna wanna open this up and kind of crease over this fold right here. Um, it'll have a tendency to kind of bunch up or get a little deformed if you don't do that. So we're gonna put that right in here. It might look like now it's time to add our coffee, but actually we wanna wet this paper filter first. And there's two reasons for that. Uh, one, we wanna get out any paper taste that will be in this guy. And then also it allows us to preheat our entire setup. So what you're gonna do is you wanna push down on this paper filter. Again, it just allows it to kind of hold more evenly and then pour directly into the center and make sure you wet the entire thing. Now, it's a really easy mistake to leave this water in here. A, we just addressed it's papery, so that's bad. And also it's just gonna make our coffee watery. So make sure you dump this out. This is a super easy mistake to make. Now it's time to add our coffee. Remember that we ground a little bit extra, so make sure you tear your scale and then weigh out 25 grams. And then after you've done that, you're gonna wanna pick up your dripper and kinda shake it a little bit just to even out the grounds. This allows for even extraction. I'm gonna use that word extraction a lot. All it means is brewing the coffee, the actual brewed coffee coming out of our dripper. For this method, we are using a one to 16 brew ratio. What that means is that since we're using 25 grams of coffee, we're gonna use 400 milliliters of water. Uh, don't let the uh, weight on your scale confuse you too much. Grams are the exact same as milliliters, so that helps out a lot. Our brew time is going to be from about two minutes and 30 seconds to three minutes and 30 seconds long. If you have a timer on your scale, obviously that works great. If you don't have a timer on your scale, you can just use a phone. We're gonna mark this time from the first time we pour into the coffee till there's just a few drips coming out at the end. If you're new to pour overs, I suggest you grab your kettle, fill it with some tap water, and just practice pouring into the sink. The two things you wanna look for here is how aggressive you're pouring, and then just the accuracy of where you're actually letting your water land. 
Let's confirm one last time that our scale is teared at zero grams. We're gonna start our timer and do an initial pour just to wet all of the coffee grounds. This is called the bloom. If you have fresh roasted coffee, you'll notice that it'll bubble a bit and that's it degassing and letting off CO2 and this will allow for an even extraction down the line. Ideally, you're gonna add just 35 to 50 grams of water, keeping in mind that the priority here is wetting all the grounds. If you're at 65 grams of water, but everything's covered, that's better. If you see a dry spot, just make sure you wet it. After your 30 second bloom, we're going to add our first large pour. This is also going to agitate or move around the coffee a bit, so don't be afraid to pour with some confidence. Pour directly into the center of your dripper for just a few seconds. This will cause the grounds to plume out, and then we're just gonna follow the edge of that plume in a clockwise direction until we're at about 150 or 175 grams. Notice how I'm constantly pouring clockwise, but also moving towards the center and then back towards the outside. Pouring in this way allows for consistent agitation and therefore constant extraction. Notice I'm never pouring entirely to the edge of the dripper. There's a good reason for this. You'll always wanna have a bit of a wall there. Maybe a little less than a quarter inch or a half a centimeter. If you pour onto this outer edge, essentially what's happening is the water is passing through the paper filter, running down the dripper, and then directly into your serving vessel, which is gonna make for a lot weaker cup of coffee. Excluding your coffee wall, never let your water level get below your grounds. We want our grounds to be constantly submerged in water. Once a majority of your water has left the dripper, we'll want to do another large pour. This time we don't need to pour directly into the center at first, just pick up where you left off and continue your clockwise pouring until you've reached the top of your coffee wall. We never want to pour over this initial wall we created for the same reason we don't want to pour directly against the wall of the dripper. Any water that goes over the top will go between our filter and our glass dripper and directly into your server, making your nice cup of coffee a lot weaker. Continue this process of clockwise pouring, letting the water pass through the grounds, and then pouring again until your scale reaches 400 milliliters. Keep an eye on your scale, as it only takes about three to four large pours to reach 400 milliliters, and it always seems to sneak up on you. Once your scale reaches 400 milliliters, and your dripper is drained until you're getting just a couple drops a second, you are done. Congratulations, you've made your first cup of coffee at home with your own two hands. Uh, this will be a lot richer and more complex than the cup of coffee you get out of your normal coffee maker because you carefully selected and controlled each step. Remember that we were aiming for a time of two minutes and 30 seconds to three minutes and 30 seconds. If you're over that three minute and 30 second mark, there's a good chance that either your grind size is too fine or that you're not pouring hard enough. Conversely, if it's under two minutes and 30 seconds, maybe your grind size is too coarse or you're pouring too aggressively. Now we have some leftover hot water and wet coffee grounds. For the hot water, it's always a good idea to pour some into your cup, that way you can preheat it before adding your new coffee. And then with our wet grounds, it makes for an awesome fertilizer or apparently a facial scrub, although I can't personally attest to that one. For the highest quality, fresh roasted beans and all other things Kian Coffee, head on over to kiancoffee.com. Depending on what you buy, there's a good chance what you get was roasted by me. And regardless of if you buy in our coffee house or online, everything is always fresh roasted. Follow us on Instagram and all the other social medias, and be sure to subscribe to Keen Coffee on YouTube for more specialty coffee videos and tutorials like this one.